Hello! In today's tutorial, we're building an AI-based video chaptering system. Imagine being able to effortlessly navigate your video content or enable your viewers to do the same without having to tediously and manually log timestamps for new scenes or concepts. Together, we'll unlock this magic using low-code techniques and Google Cloud technologies. Even if you're not a Google fan, we'll try to make the concepts adaptable to other cloud environments and use cases. Let's plot out the adventure before we get started hands-on. We'll start by collecting some video files that we want to generate chapters for. We'll whisk them off into cloud storage in Google Cloud. Next, we'll leverage the open source Kubeflow framework for efficient extraction of images from our collected videos. The result? A treasure trove full of both videos and individual frames in our cloud storage bucket. But we're not stopping there. Next, we'll train an AI model on this data. This involves a bit of supervised learning, so we'll be using manually labeled frames for the training. To wrap things up, we're going to use Kubeflow pipelines again for the model's inference phase, creating a repeatable system for automatically generating chapters for new videos. Are you still with me? Excellent. Now let's get our hands on some example video files to use in our chaptering system. A great source is Wikimedia Commons, where we'll snatch a multi-part interview as our test subject. We'll train on parts 1, 2, and 3, and use the model to infer chapters for part 4. Let's download these files and secure them in our cloud storage bucket. From there, things only get more exciting. We're constructing a frame extraction pipeline using the formidable Kubeflow framework alongside the powerful serverless Vertex AI pipeline service. Rest assured, all code is included in the video description for your detailed study and reuse. Our preparation pipeline is fairly straightforward. We extract frames as images using OpenCV and then save and catalog the extractions.
Before we test this out though, I've spotted a little hiccup here. We shouldn't train on all four videos, instead focus on just the first three. The last one will be used for inference. Let's also remember to compile this pipeline. The Vertex AI pipeline service needs the compiled spec, not the Python code. Let's delete that and recompile our pipeline. Then we'll whisk off that compiled specification to Google Cloud Storage. If needed, install Kubeflow pipelines with pip before proceeding to compilation. Having readied our pipeline.json for three videos, let's navigate to Vertex AI to get things started. On the way at the Vertex AI dashboard, we'll activate the suggested APIs. Now create a pipeline run and import our pipelines.json file from cloud storage. We can simply use the same bucket as our pipeline runs output directory. So after an action packed 35 minutes, our pipeline run is done and we can uncover the import file path for our AI model training. How? Simply by clicking the link inside one of our frame extraction tasks. Every video has a unique directory housing its video frames. The import file catalogs all the files that we're going to use to train our AutoML model. So, next stop, Vertex AI, home of our datasets, where we'll ingest that import file from cloud storage before labeling and training. After the import's done its thing, we'll have a collection of unlabeled images. Since we're doing supervised training here, we're going to need to categorize these images. As an example for this tutorial, we're breaking them down into three groups, intro frames, question frames, and answer frames. Our frames have two people when the interviewer is asking a question. These will be given the question label. Solo frames, where Chomsky delivers answers, will form our answer label. Further, we'll occasionally get some intro frames, which look like this. After the labeling, we've got around 10 times more question frames than intro frames, and a whopping 10 times more answer frames than question frames. Not ideal? Maybe. But as long as each category holds at least 10 labeled video frames, we meet the minimum requirements and can train a new model. We'll need to set a budget for our training important for both managing the quality of our model and the training cost. Our inference will be small, but our training certainly won't be. A quick trip to AutoML will reveal a rate of around 350 per node hour. We're committing to eight node hours here, so with our eight nodes working simultaneously, we'll be done in roughly one hour. Let's get going. Should we need to abandon a job launched in error, we can always do so from Vertex AI's training interface. Once our training is complete, we can take a peek at the model in the model registry and examine some metrics before setting up our inference pipeline.
Having utilized about 1,700 training images, 209 validation images, and 209 test images, we've received perfect precision and recall across all categories. That's certainly eyebrow raising. Is it overfitting? Let's hold off on jumping to conclusions and first observe how our model performs on real inference tasks. For our inference pipeline specification, we'll once again call upon the services of the Cloud Shell editor. Just like our preparation pipeline, we'll be creating a Kubeflow pipeline for the inference work. Further, we'll follow a similar approach and save video frames to our bucket. However, we have a fresh addition, a batch prediction job that will assess whether these are intro, question, or answer frames. Our batch jobs can operate in parallel. A nice benefit for those of you handling a large volume of videos. This pipeline specification needs a unique bucket name to avoid overriding the other file. How about pipeline inference.json? Finally, back in pipelines, we'll have to generate a new run using this file. Again, we'll use the AI video chapters bucket as our output directory and run the pipeline. Fortunately, we have an error, a learning opportunity. Let's click into this task for the logs here and see what might have gone wrong. All right, so it's not liking that we have a batch prediction job in US Central 1, but a multi-regional storage bucket with the US multi-region. So let's maybe revise the approach by creating a new bucket in that same region. We'll transfer data out here in a batch job. A copy should be fine since we don't really have much data anyway. We'll create a new bucket that's quite similar to our other one, but we'll make sure it's co-located with our batch prediction jobs. Once the copy job finishes, we can check our new bucket, and indeed, it looks like we have all the data. We do, of course, need to revise our pipeline to use that co located bucket. So, in our inference pipeline here, we'll just do a find and replace for our bucket name. And starting at the top, we'll just carefully make sure that we're doing the right replacement here. Indeed, all that looks good. Let's compile this pipeline and try again.
And actually, just for consistency and clarity, let's upload this pipeline specification to that new bucket instead. And then we'll use that as our import for the pipeline specification. Once that pipeline completes, we can check out the logs to see our automatic chaptering work. Specifically, it sees the intro over the first five seconds, a question over the next approximately 50 seconds, and then an answer for the remainder of the video. And that does line up nicely with what actually happens in the video, so our model is working well. We've also got our outputs here, so we could use further pipeline steps and processing based on the chaptering. We hope this video was helpful and will, of course, include this diagram file as well as the demonstration code in the video description. Please leave any questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching and please enjoy responsibly.